started back when I was uh, in high school. And I know that I played sports. And if I really exerted myself, I'd have to sit down and I'd be shaking and trembling. Okay, can you sign your name? No. Okay. And today is the 13th? I can't write anymore. Small tasks that I try to do around the house. It's very hard because of the tremors. Minute things, as simple as brushing my teeth or eating, is very difficult. Eating especially. A central tremor is uh, a disease that's not that well understood, um, where people develop uh, tremor, usually later in life, although people can be affected at a very young age. Most people do fine with it and don't need uh, surgery, but some people have it to such a degree that they're unable to feed themselves uh, or shave or uh, write or do a lot of other things. Decades of living with a worsening problem known as essential tremor have kept Mr. Terry from doing many of the things we take for granted. Eating out or even shaving has become impossible. After exhausting every possible medical solution, he is left with one last option. A brain surgery that, if successful, could erase a disorder that has been a part of his life for more than 40 years. Well, we tried certain medications and they didn't work. He basically told me that with the deep brain stimulation that they said they had a 90 some percent positive reaction to it and he felt that was a good candidate for it. Deep brain stimulation will be used to treat Mr. Terry's disorder. Using electrical impulses Dr. Schwab and his team believe they can disrupt the electrical circuit that is creating this tremor. His neurologist is world-renowned movement disorders expert, Dr. Peter Lewitt. Well, tremor is uh, a circuit-related uh, problem. That is, uh, there's some oscillator, something that makes shaking happen at the brain level, and we want to intervene with that effectively by shutting off those signals without taking away normal functions. Uh, it is a bit mysterious, but we have some target zones in the brain where that can be enacted, and unfortunately, not everybody is a candidate for surgery, but for those who have failed medications and could benefit from this, this is a remarkable process. We need to get this electrode very precisely placed. If we're off three or four millimeters, it just doesn't work, or you get side effects, or you don't get good tremor control. But you know, the vast majority of patients have really significant success and a lot of relief of their problems. He had failed medical therapy. There are really two or three drugs uh, that are uh, known to be useful for this condition. Um, he didn't get adequate relief with those medications and his tremor was adversely affecting his life. Uh, he was unable to do the things he wanted to do. It's been so long for me since I could do those simple things and it'll change my life basically. It'll just be a whole different world for me. He'll have his life back. He will be able to join the family and family functions and not set off to the side or, you know, say I'm not going to go to dinner. Um, that's going to be a great thing. You did great. That's the hardest part of the day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll get you back the brain's an electrical organ. And the general idea is that um, you can put an electrode and, in a very specific part of the brain and interrupt the abnormal circuitry in a disease state. And if you can figure out how the circuitry is working abnormally, you can try and modulate it with delivering an electrical signal. I just like to go out to dinner 
with my family and be able to eat, have dinner. You know, it's simple things, it sounds like, but to me it's really important. As he begins, Dr. Schwab and his team must drill through a small piece of Mr. Terry's skull. Then, a tiny wire is inserted to make sure that they are within a small area of the brain called the vim thalamus to disrupt the tremor. For the majority of surgery, Mr. Terry must be fully awake for the team to test the effectiveness of the device. We really need the patient's help to get it in the right place. The per person needs to be awake uh, to help me get it where it needs to be. Once that's done, the patient is sedated and we bury the electrode with a cap uh, underneath the scalp. With each fraction of a millimeter traveled by the wire, the surgeon listens to the distinct firing patterns of the neurons in the brain. What sounds like static are amplified discharges from small groups of neurons. By changing the firing patterns of these neurons with precise electric impulses, the tremor can also be disrupted without interfering with Mr. Terry's normal brain activity. You're doing great and it's all going well, so I know it's getting long for you, but you know, pretty soon we're going to be in the home stretch, so, okay? Okay. You're doing great. How's this tremor? I'm in. Go there. Go there. Okay, have him draw another spiral. X-ray. X-ray. And then you return to the guide to it. Expose the tips. It's actually a bit better. A little bit. Finally, after hours of testing, a breakthrough is found. Hold your hand out. Okay, what do you think of that? <laughs> Amazingly, after four decades of shaking, doctors are able to nearly eliminate all evidence of tremor. Even as they continue to test for side effects, Mr. Terry cannot believe what he is seeing. Most of the types of surgeries we do, we don't see the effects till we see the patient and follow up or they return to clinic. One of the nice things about this is we're able to see the effects in the operating room. It's not uncommon to have patients sitting there in the operating room staring at their hand, not able to believe how steady their hand is, uh, or even crying when they're able to write their name for the first time in 10 or 20 years. Perfect, we're done. You can go to sleep. Excellent job, Mr. Terry. Weeks after his surgery, Patrick Terry returns to activate a device that could eliminate his essential tremor. Today he meets with his team to see if a lifetime of shaking can finally come under control. And so how have things been since Good. I saw you? Good. Uh, you've been through a lot and uh, looking forward to getting started today? Yes. All right. Yes, I am. This patient uh, is going to have programming, which means uh, changing the electrical signals to optimize control of symptoms to use uh, the frequency and the amount of voltage uh, using the electrodes that were implanted in the brain to try and get the best results for him. Well, the electrode that you saw being put into the brain now has uh, the opportunity to be uh, adjusted to optimal settings so that the tremors, the slowness of movement, other features can be brought into better control, better than what medications can do by themselves. Can you hold out your, your arm like this? Very well. With this finger, touch your nose and touch my finger. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do you like that? Yeah. You think we're heading in the right direction? With 90 yeah. hertz, 90 hertz. Mm -hmm. And only a few weeks after programming, Mr. Terry is at home, amazed at the complete change in his life. I feel great. It's a world of difference. Uh, to be able to shave, to brush your teeth, to eat something I never, never really thought I'd know again, you know. 
it's changed my outlook on life because I'm able to go into public and eat a meal. I can't thank them enough. They were professional. They made you comfortable. It changed my life.